What is going on guys, Bangalina here coming back at you with another video for another episode in the Madden 18 rebuild series. These are of course fantasy style rebuilds where we don't exactly try to be, you know, the most realistic as possible, but it's a fantasy style rebuild where we try to make this team better in any way possible by any means necessary. If you're interested in extremely realistic rebuilds, those are also on the channel in the realistic rebuilds playlist. I'll try to get something popping up uh, either right above me in the top right of your screen uh, with a card linked to that playlist if that's what you're interested in um, or maybe in the description down below. But speaking of the description, if you guys are interested in following me on Twitter and perhaps choosing the next team that I do rebuild, link to that is in the description, twitter.com slash bangle designs. We're coming up, I guess, somewhat closing in on 3,000 uh, followers and closing in on 50,000 subscribers on this main channel. So if we can hit 50k by Christmas, that would be absolutely phenomenal by the holidays, Kwanzaa, whatever you know, the heck you want to say. Um, but um, nevertheless, I feel like you guys can do it. I don't ask for likes, but I, I might start because that's apparently the way I want my channel to do well. So if you guys can hit a thousand likes in like, you know, by tomorrow, I might drop. You know, I I definitely will drop another rebuild of a specific team, and I'll ask you on Twitter if you guys meet the goal of a thousand likes. Um, but we are doing the Chicago Bears. And you know, at first you look at this team and you say, hey, you know, they got a bunch of aging players that aren't really that good. It's kind of a somewhat talentless roster, but the more you look into it, you know, they have a bunch of young talent that's really trying to usher in a new era of Chicago Bears football in the Windy City. They've recently named Mitch Trubisky the starting quarterback. And by the time this comes out, he has not yet started an NFL game. He could be one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time by the time you're watching this. Say it's, you know, like 10 or 15 years down the line. How crazy would that be? Uh, but, you know, they have a bunch of good young players. You look at Jordan Howard. You look at the emergence of Tariq Cohen through the first couple weeks of the season. Could Mitch Trubisky be the real deal? Cam Merritt, if he can stay healthy, can be super, super good. On the defensive side of the ball, you know, Kyle Fuller really hasn't developed into that star player that you thought he might have been when the Bears took him with a first-round pick. Um, just a few years ago, but a guy in the secondary as well, Adrian Amos. He could be the real deal at safety. He's been electrifying. He's been really good in, in just a short time in the NFL. Leonard Floyd, kind of the same deal. If these guys can stay healthy and stay on the field, they could be really, really good players and bring that Bears you know, defense and this Bears team as a whole back to the forefront of the NFL as one of the top teams competing for Super Bowls. And um, I guess without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this Madden NFL 18 Chicago Bears rebuild. Let's turn this team around. All right, so our starting quarterback is, of course, going to be Mitch Trubisky. We can probably look to trade Mike Glennon, and if any teams are interested in Mark Sanchez, uh, you know, Mark Dirty Sanchez can get traded as well. Tariq Cohen's already up to a 79 overall. He's been very good so far um, out of, what is it, North Carolina, A&T. Not familiar with that school, I'll be honest, but, you know, you look at the receiving core, and it's fairly poor. I forgot. We can go ahead and do this. Get Cam Murray at the back of there. We are playing with injuries off. This is in the preseason with updated rosters. We have Cam Meredith is, I guess, really the only real talented player in this team. Not a huge fan of Marcus Whedon, Kendall Wright, Josh Bellamy, um, Kevin White. I mean, is it safe to say he's a bust at this point? He's really never played a full season, and I think he's out for the entirety of this season. So, I mean, he's a guy with all the talent in the world that just can't stay healthy, can't stay on the field, which means he's essentially valueless to his team. But we might try to get him some snaps. I mean... He has the size, he has the speed, he has the attributes. It's just awareness and route running. He could be a tremendous player. Zach Miller, we're probably going to trade. Deion Sims is like, what, 27, 28? He's 26. Poor run block. He's going to be our starting run block. Uh, it should be tight end. Even Adam Shaheen, uh, he'll play a lot. So Zach Miller's got to get traded. Even, you know, Deion Sims can get traded as well. On the offensive line, I think Cody Whitehair should be a higher overall. But you have, like, Charles Leno, Kyle Long, Josh Sitton, Tom Compton, Bobby Massey was kind of a mistake. Bradley Sowell. Um, it's like a fairly average offensive line. I'm probably going to look to trade a lot of them. Defensively, you look at Pernell McPhee, Willie Young. Both can get traded. Nick Kwiatkowski. Uh, Kwiatkowski. Kwiat, I, I'm having difficulty saying that. <laughs> He's an 80 overall. We're probably, uh, probably going to like to get him starting. Probably try to trade Jarrell Freeman. He is getting older, 31 years old. In this rebuild, he probably just won't develop at all. He's only going to go downhill. Leonard Floyd's a good option. We get Sam Acho. Um, why are you such a low overall? Why is that the case? I really don't know. 
Eddie Jackson is our starting free safety. Uh, we also got Quentin Dempsey there. I mean, there are some trade pieces on this team. We can trade Prince of Mucamara. We can trade Bryce Callahan. Like, I'm looking at a complete revamp of this team for the most part. Akeem Hicks gone. You know, um, what is that? Jordan Jenkins? There's, yeah, John Jenkins. Okay, my mistake. Eddie Goldman. We got Mitch Unrein, Jonathan Bullard. I really had high hopes for him. He hasn't played a ton, but I think he can still be a really good player um, for where he was drafted. He was like a, th a second or third round pick, if I recall. So he could be a good player. We got Marcus Cooper. There are some trade pieces on this team. Nothing really stands out as, you know, an untouchable for the most part. Although, you know, I'm keeping Jordan Howard and Mitch Trubisky and probably Cam Meredith. But those are the only three that really, like, I'm not going to touch them at all. I could trade literally anyone else on this team pretty much. Man, we're going to keep Leonard Floyd too. But let's go ahead and get into some of these trades. All right, with this first trade, it's kind of a massive one. Uh, we're trading a lot of value, but I think in long term... Uh, asset it's going to be just tremendous for us so we have Prince of Mucamara Pernell McPhee and a second round pick for Darius big play slay from the Detroit Lions one of the most exciting young players in football one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL in my opinion super exciting to watch super talented uh, and he is the newest Chicago Bear so he's going from Detroit to now you know a division rival in the Chicago Bears but we lost some big players so we're gonna look to replace them Probably get some picks, but a Darius Slay is a new highest overall on our team. So that's pretty crazy first trade. With this trade, I'm trading Jarrell Freeman and Deion Sims for the number three overall projected pick from the San Francisco 49ers. So basically, I'm just hoping uh, that they absolutely tank, go terrible. Uh, and we, you know, I kind of, I'm rebuilding them, but at the same time, it's like year one. I, it wouldn't be the worst thing if we had a top five pick from a poor record. So, um,. If we could have really, you know, two top tier uh, selections, that'd be fantastic. I would also really like to get uh, two second rounders from the 49ers, if at all possible. They do have a ton of picks, and I think we'd benefit greatly from acquiring them. So if I could maybe trade Zach Miller in efforts to get some of these trades, you know, that'd, that'd be ideal. But they don't need a tight end any, anymore, obviously. So kind of SOL on that one. With this trade, we are trading Zach Miller, John Jenkins, and a seventh round pick for the number five overall projected pick from the Los Angeles Rams now. And uh, I don't know if that's actually going to be top five because they have played really well in real life. So I'm not sure how well that's going to translate into the game. But, you know, it very well could. So that first round pick could be extremely valuable or really not much at all. I still want second round picks. I have three first rounders now. I need to find a way to get second round picks big time. With this trade, I'm trading Josh Sitt and Sam Acho. You know, pains me. Hook'em Horns, big Texas Longhorns fan. Sam Acho, of course, Texas alum. We're trading a third rounder next year for a second and a third from the Seattle Seahawks. I think those are going to be somewhat valuable picks. It may end up being if the Seahawks are really good, like, you know, a, like almost a third and a fourth. But a second and a third isn't terrible. And uh, Josh Sitton, 31 years old, no room to develop. I would rather just go out and either trade or acquire a different better, younger offensive lineman somehow uh, and have the picks. So, I mean, I think building through the draft is going to be the best thing for the Bears in this situation. We have a ton of picks right now, and we're going to uh, look to utilize and make the most out of them, you know, coming up in the, this, you know, upcoming offseason. Can I even speak? I think so. Not really, no. With this trade, I'm trading Willie Young just straight up for Shaq Mason from the Patriots. That's the type of player that I'm talking about that I would way rather have a 24-year-old, 83 overall right guard in Shaq Mason rather than a 31-year-old, 81 overall uh, offensive lineman in Josh Sitton. I mean, that's just too easy of a trade for me to make, and I am quite happy with the result. And I think that we're coming up to the end of our trades. I feel like I've kind of, for the most part, taken out some of these older players, and we got like a bunch of young talent on the team now. But I mean, there still are some players that I, you know, I'm, I'm putting in there now that I still have interest in moving. All right, so this is quite interesting for me. We're trading Kendall Wright, Mike Lennon, and a seventh for Michael Pierce from the Ravens. I didn't realize he was such a ridiculously high overall. Uh, I, of course, I do know who he is, but, you know, I see 87 overall. I'm like, where did this come from? He's ridiculously good in the game. So, I, I don't know. Maybe he's been balling out in real life. I haven't really noticed him all that much. But it's like, now we have a top defensive tackle in football out of nowhere, at least in Madden. 87 overall seems like a ridiculous jump to make, you know, from wherever he started the year. But, uh, you know, good for him. 24 years old, already an 87 overall. Just out of nowhere. I mean, I'll take it. I'm not complaining. With this trade, it's, you know, another kind of interesting one. We're, we're giving up a little bit of value just for potential 
growth down the line and development. And I think that's what we get with this trade. Danny Trevathan, Marcus Cooper, and a third round pick for Marcus Golden from the Arizona Cardinals. My thought process with this was I would rather have Nick Kwiatkowski um, and, uh, and uh, Chandler Jones, not Chandler Jones, excuse me. Um, what am I even talking about? Christian Jones, excuse me, had a little meltdown there. Of course, the former Florida State linebacker. I know who he is. I, I don't know what it, that was right there. Um, but I'd rather have him and uh, Kwiatkowski starting than Danny Trevathan. Marcus Cooper was buried on the depth chart. Now, third round pick really isn't too much to give up for a new starting outside linebacker in Marcus Golden because we didn't have really anyone in the position after trading uh, whoever we just traded. I think it was uh, Willie Young who we, who we moved on from. But Marcus Golden, 83 overall, young player. He actually had like 12 and a half sacks just last year. So he's a player that is very talented and can continue to be dominant. And uh, hopefully that's what he brings to Chicago. And uh, I'm still looking to get some more picks. Like a second and a third would be great because now we don't have a third round pick anymore. But I think we're coming down. Maybe one last trade uh, will do it. All right, I know I kind of lulled you guys to sleep with talking about, you know, maybe one more trade for a you know, a second and third round pick. But Charles Leno, Tom Compton, and a second round pick next year gets his Landon Collins from the New York Giants. One of my favorite players. I am a Giants fan, of course. And maybe I'll make a video about why my name is actually Bengal. So many people ask me that question. But Landon Collins is now the newest Chicago Bear. We're kind of trying to build a no-fly zone with Darius Slay and, you know, the emergence of Adrian Amos and now Landon Collins on the team. We've got a really good group of young defensive backs and really good young players, and he is now the best overall player on our team. I mean, I think we're moving in the right direction. We haven't given up all that much to get a ton of, ton of value on this team. All right, I mean, sometimes I just ridiculously screw over the CPU because the trade engine seems broken, but a fourth round pick, Bobby Massey, and a fourth rounder next year for the number two overall projected pick from the Jets, I can't turn that down. So, you know, <laughs> we have... One, two, three, four first round picks. Jesus. All right, last trade for sure. Eddie Jackson, a fifth next year and a fourth for a third round pick from the Dolphins. And we are golden. Those are all the trades I'm going to make. I'm going to change some positions around so we actually have everyone starting where they need to. And I will check you guys in a minute. Or catch you that check? What am I saying? I don't know. All right, so this is the lineup. Uh, obviously, new addition to the team, Shaq Mason. But there are a ton of new players that were already on the team that have been moved and accelerated into these starting roles. Bradley Sowell is one of them. Um, we have Adam Shaheen. You know, the wide receiver core is not great, but we're going to probably address that in the draft or the offseason. Mitch Trubisky, of course, is the new starting quarterback. He was going to be that at the start of this anyway. Nick Kwiatkowski is the new starting middle linebacker. We also have uh, Christian Jones. Marcus Golden is a new addition to the team, of course. Who could forget about Landon Collins? Michael Pierce and Darius Slay. So we got an interesting group of players. I got to change this to a 3-4 so it matches. Um, so we have these guys, Marcus Golden, Leonard Floyd, actually going after the quarterback. But I'm going to do that, and I will meet you guys at the midseason mark. All right, so at the midseason mark, we are 1-7. and seven. Not even Matt. Not even Matt at all. I just need Mitch Trubisky to get his shit together and win Offensive Rookie of the Year. So he gets added development, which would be up to quick. Also, more XP, never hurt anybody. Cam Meredith is our top free agent, although I think Landon Collins might be as well, but it just isn't showing up. Bryce Callahan, I'd like to bring back, get his own coverage up for sure. So I'm going to try to bring these players back, and then I get back to you guys when I'm finished signing everybody. All right, so I decided to bring back Pat O'Donnell, Cam Meredith, and Bryce Callahan. The rest I'm not really too interested in, or I'm going to wait. Like, Kyle Fuller is a horrific option at cornerback with 68-man coverage. And you could say, oh, moving back to safety. But our safeties are set with Adrian Amos and, uh, of course, Landon Collins. So we're not going to be doing that. Everyone's playing with low confidence. We have just nobody available. Kevin White needs to start. We'll put him at the two. Hopefully he stays there. But I'm going to do some scouting, and I guess I'll see you guys for the playoffs, which clearly I don't think we'll be making. So at the end of uh, the first season, we finished 4-11-1. Everyone in the NFC North tied. Uh, at least one game, and I guess everyone did only one game. Mitch Trubisky, 3,700 yards, 28 touchdowns, 16 picks. One pick per game is not fantastic. Even Jordan Howard didn't really play exceptionally. 3.7 on the ground, 1,100 yards. Cam Meredith had a very good season, 1,100 yards on 76 catches and eight touchdowns. Blocking, uh, Bradley, oof, we're not, nope. 
Uh, Nick Kwiatkowski, 162 tackles is fantastic. Tackles for a loss, 10 for Akeem Hicks, led the team, also nine for Michael Pierce. Quarterback sacks was 10 and a half for Jonathan Bullard. And damn, Nick Kwiatkowski played really well. Five interceptions, Kyle Fuller also got five. Darius Slay got four. How does Kyle Fuller get five picks with 68 man and 78 zone? I don't know. That being said, I'm not bringing him back. <laughs> Christian Jones played okay. Let our team in four fumbles. A number of other players also had that. And then defensive touchdowns. One for Kyle Fuller led the team. Awards. I'm hoping for an offensive rookie of the year as Aaron Rodgers wins MVP of the 10-5 and 1 Packers. I doubt you'll see any Bears. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Aaron Rodgers. NFC Defense Player of the Year goes to Mike Daniels. Nick Kwiatkowski finishes at number four. Please. Yes, Mitch Trubisky gets Offensive Rookie of the Year. It's just so rare that I see that nowadays that when it happens, I get so excited. Tariq Cohen is at number five. Adam Shaheen at number eight. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Jared Davis. That happens quite a lot, actually. He's really good in real life, too, though. And uh, I'm fine with that, but hopefully a ton of XP for Mitch Trubisky. 33K. Quick development? No, come on. Why would they not give him plus quick? That actually kind of sucks. Well, let's go ahead and simulate... I guess, to the Super Bowl, see who's in it. Patriots and Eagles are in the Super Bowl. That's an interesting matchup. Deja vu a little bit, huh? All right, so here we are in the draft. We have the 4th, 6th, 15th, and 20th picks in the first round. Uh, in the second round, we have some picks as well. And um, this is not an amazing draft class. I'm not going to beat around the bush. It's not phenomenal. But uh, hopefully we can still land some top prospects that can help out the team. But uh, I think I might use some of these picks to trade for well-established players in the league already. It kind of depends who's there. If a left tackle's off the board, oh, he's not. I might draft, like, my first ever tackle. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done that in a rebuild. But uh, get a tempting prospect. I'm going to be taking Roman Perryman out of Auburn. B-plus pass block is phenomenal. B-impact block is good. C-plus run block is not bad. That could be in the low 80s potentially, even though that's not how C-pluses work. In actual grading system, he's super fast. The fastest in the class of any, uh, I guess, left tackle. He is super agile, super quick, and amazingly strong at third in the class. I mean, 35 reps isn't like anywhere close to the record. I think the record is 49 by Steven Paya. But 35 is still incredible. He's very strong. I think he's going to be one hell of a player. Roman Perryman, welcome to the team. 81 overall with quick development. 89 strength is ideal. 79 run block. 86 pass block. 84 impact block. Really, really good player overall. I'm comfortable with that pick. That was actually another player that I considered heavily was uh, Lennox Cloud. Looked really, really, really good. And it wasn't supposed to go for a while. I wouldn't have drafted him probably because I have another player in mind with this pick. But um, I think he would have been... Very, very good. We'll take a look at him after. I'm actually kind of curious. With this pick, though, I'm taking Max Sullivan. Now, it doesn't make a ton of sense. You look at Leonard Floyd, you look at Marcus Golden, you say, hey, you don't really need them, but it's like, I want to experiment potentially with different schemes and different scheme fits, and he looks just really, really good. You look at B-plus block shed, B-minus finesse move, B-minus power move, and you're like, that's incredible. Didn't have an amazing combine, but it's fairly well-rounded. He's strong enough, fast enough, quick enough. Um, and his top three skills are just overwhelmingly good in my opinion. So we're going to go ahead, take the chance, take him to get a really, really good player. And we're going to find a spot on the field for him. Max Sullivan, 77 overall with slow development. Oh my goodness. That is my worst pick of the entire year. I haven't had anything close to this bad. And it's not even that huge of a reach. Well, I mean, it is pretty big, but six down to 29 and slow development, just kind of like the cherry on top of the Sunday for this Max Sullivan bust. I thought he'd be way better. I really can't do much with him, to be honest. Uh, slow development. Bane of my existence. I'm going to be taking a center. This is the offensive lineman draft. Todd Walsh out of Michigan State. B plus impact block. B minus pass block. B minus run block. Really, really good. And then he's super fast, super strong, super agile. Exactly what you look for out of a lineman. I think I probably will make him play left guard. I don't think that Kyle Long is a long-term option at left guard. So Todd Walsh, welcome to the team. 76 overall, normal development, that's fine. 84 strength is okay. Then he's got great run pass, run pass block and impact blocking. And uh, I'm, I'm okay with this pick. This has been one of my worst draft classes of all time. But um, I guess it could be worse, hypothetically. We had a good first pick in the left tackle. But I guess other than that, pretty poor. 
I of course made the call that I didn't want Kyle Long anymore. We drafted his successor and he's off the team now. The 20th overall pick, Kyle Long, and a third rounder again this year for Stefan Diggs from the Minnesota Vikings, adding an actual bona fide target for Mitch Trubisky in our offense. I think that makes us a lot better. Kyle Long, I know he's like classic bear over the last decade, but it's just like he's 28. He's an 81 overall. He's just going to continue to regress or stay in place. There's no moving up from his 81 overall or 82 overall or whatever it was. So we need an upgrade. We assess that in the draft and um, we trade for an actual really, really talented player in Stefan Diggs. I'm comfortable with the move. There was no one really in this range that I had any desire to draft. Oh my goodness. For the first time in the history of Madden 18, I found a baller. Someone that said, fuck you, Roger Goodell. I'm not doing your combine. And they're usually kind of sick, to be honest. But um, I'm not going to take him right now. I don't have a fourth, though. I do need a middle linebacker. You know what? We're doing it. He hates Roger Goodell. We love him. Rashad Justin. Interesting. Hmm. <laughs> that is the icing on the cake with that one. They're not the same as they were last year, man. Maybe maybe the combine's the move. Maybe you gotta go to the combine. Rashad, what are you doing, buddy? All right, so this is gonna be the lineup for season number two. It's not phenomenal, but I mean, we do have talented players on our team uh, for the most part. Sounds like someone just subscribed. Thanks for doing that, bud. Uh, anyway, offensive line's looking nice. We got Adam Shaheen up to an 81 overall. There are some improvements. Cody Whitehair is now a left guard. Uh, Tim Walsh, I believe that's his name. Todd doesn't matter he's starting center receiving core could be better but you know it's not awful i think kevin white is going to be our slot receiver like he does have potential still defensively uh no one has improved that much max sullivan's going to play middle linebacker i don't know jonathan buller's up to a 78 overall and uh, keem hicks is regressing because our defensive production last year was absolutely trash <laughs> we allowed 2,000 rushing yards so uh, that's not good. But I um, guess let's go ahead and do what we do, advance to the midseason. Hope we win. All right, so at the midseason mark, we are three and four. Somehow this is improvement to season number one. Could be worse, though. Madden Sim always just hates me. So that kind of is what it is. Um, currently at the bottom of the division, that's always fun. But uh, Landon Collins is a free agent, as you can see. Also, we have... Stefan Diggs, Michael Pierce, Shaq Mason, Marcus Golden, Eddie Goldman. I say Goldman, I meant Golden for Marcus. Anyway, we have a lot of free agents. Adrian Amos, jeez, dude. Does anyone, can you guys just like not be for a while? Let's bring him back, I guess. All right, I just screwed up and totally just didn't show you guys any of the people that I brought back. Is there a way that I can see it? No, well, I brought back everyone except for is here. <laughs> so Lennon Collins, Stefan Diggs. A um, bunch of players. Marcus Golden, however, really didn't like my offer. I don't know what I want to do because we do have the middle linebacker. I think it's Mac Hollison is his name. Uh, Max Sullivan. And it's like, I don't know if I want to move him to outside linebacker or stick with Marcus Golden. So, I mean, a lot is really dependent, but we're pretty shitty. I'm going to do some scouting and I'll see you guys for the playoffs, which we will most likely miss. All right, so of course we missed the playoffs. We suck. Finished 7-9, and nine, though. That's improvement. Still at the bottom of our, of our division, though. How did our man Mitch Trubisky play? I would say much better. The, inter excuse me, the interceptions are down, but the touchdowns are also down. Rushing Jordan Howard is much improved. Still put the ball on the ground three times. Stefan Diggs is a huge factor, I think, in why Mitch Trubisky was much better. Near 100 catches, nearly 1,200 yards, 11 touchdowns. He played well. Blocking. Ooh, poor rookie season from Roman Perryman. Not going to lie. Nick Kwiatkowski, 146 tackles. Tackle for loss is 8 from Michael Pierce that led the team. Quarterback sacks, 16 from Leonard Floyd, and then 8 apiece from Marcus Golden and Jonathan Bullard. Um, Max Sullivan got 1 playing middle linebacker. You know, he's not really in a position to do that. Uh, Darius Slay led our team in interceptions with 5. Force fumbles is 3 from Nick Kwiatkowski and Landon Collins. Any defensive touchdowns? Of course not. Maybe Big Play Slay would have one or two, but nope. Trevor Simeon is MVP of the 10-6 and 6 Broncos. Okay. NFC Offense Player of the Year is Devontae Freeman. No Bears. Defense Player of the Year is Anthony Hitchens, Nick Watkowski at number three. He's been playing pretty well. Offense Rookie of the Year goes to Oscar Proctor. 
No Bears. Show me a defense rookie there, please. Goes to Killian McCullough. Max Sullivan at number two. That is so unfortunate. So unfortunate. But uh, there's not really much I can do about that. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and advance to the offseason. Season three, I think we're going to be so far improved. But, you know, obviously, Rome wasn't built in a day. And neither was the Chicago Bears team. So, uh, we're in two seasons. So, season three. <laughs> Big stuff coming in. Marcus Golden exists. That's right. Okay. All right, so we're going to franchise tag. No, I guess we don't even have to at this point. We're just going to make him a better offer. Let's give him a four-year deal. And uh, he does end up re-signing for four years. Eddie Goldman, not really interested. Adrian Amos, not really interested in him either, if I'm being honest. But I'm going to advance the offseason um, further for free agency. I have a number of positions I really need upgrades on. Safety is one of them. All right, so Byron Jones is the newest Chicago Bear. He's going to be an incredible addition to our team uh, at free safety. Better than Adrian Amos was, at least from an overall standpoint. I would probably prefer Adrian Amos on my team, to be honest. But it's just like he wasn't developing. We need to make a change. So we made that change. Team is coming along, though. Age, man, fucking Akeem Hicks keeps going down. He is slow development. Since when? Since when? Oh my goodness. Yeah, he's so shitty now. I gotta try and trade him. Alright, with this trade, I'm trading Akeem Hicks. I think it's like Tim, Tom, fucking... I don't care what it is. Could be the Latimer. It doesn't matter. And a third next year for a first and a second round pick from the Denver Broncos. First round picks are really valuable to me right now because there are some really talented players that I want to add to this team. So I got to figure out a way to get more of those. That's kind of where I am right now. And hopefully have a way better draft class than the last one. With this trade, I'm trading Bucky Hodges and a future second for the number nine overall pick from the Tennessee Titans. And I think we're good enough to go into the draft now. I have I have some picks. I'm going to continue to scout, and then I will see you guys for the draft. Trades might not necessarily be over, but as you can see, Harmon Mickens is a really talented wideout I'd love to add to the team. Not to mention Antoine Ellison. Really, really good-looking player. All right, so here we are in the draft. We have the ninth pick, the 11th pick, and the 21st pick. I need to try and move up for that cornerback, I think. I don't think we're going to be in play for that wide receiver. But uh, Antoine Ellison needs to be on this team, like, 1,000%. With this trade, I'm trading the number 9 overall pick, a first next year, and our starting right tackle currently. But I plan on drafting one, so I think we're going to be fine for the fourth overall pick from the Jets. So we're basically trading up five spots and then losing our first next year uh, and our starting right tackle for potentially a player that might not even be there. And he's not... Oh, the fucking Bengals, the irony. With this trade, I'm trading back one spot, giving up two six-round picks to acquire a second rounder, which I might use to trade back up to the first. This is like the most hectic rebuild I've done in terms of trades. It's been absolutely ridiculous things. That was a wide receiver I was interested in, but I didn't really need to draft him, so I'm okay with that. Uh, I think I'm going to end up settling for Kevin Conway if we even end up going wide receiver at all. With this trade, I am trading my fifth overall pick for a first, a second, and a third from the Bengals next year. And I swear, I will trade for Antoine Ellison. I definitely won't. It's going to be impossible. But uh, that's just kind of the way way she goes sometimes. Like, I can't do anything about it. With this pick, though, I am drafting Hale Redman. We're not going to pronounce that Haley. He's not a girl. B-plus tackle. Great. B-plus power moves. Fantastic. B-plus block shed. Fantastic. One of the best... 3-4 defensive ends I've ever seen. I think he's going to be an incredible player. Hale Redman. 81 overall. Normal development. But, like, look at his attributes, though. 87 tackle. 87 block shot. 87 power move. I mean, it's going to be play rec and awareness. It's have to be low. 65 awareness, 72 play rec. Like, he's already an 81 overall in the top 30 for all left ends in the NFL. Like, if, even if he wins Defensive Rookie of the Year, he's going to be an incredible player. I'm so happy with that pick. Immediate, immediate upgrade um, to Akeem Hicks. And the guy who was going to draft just got drafted at number uh, 15. So this, this, this rebuild has not gone well from a drafting standpoint whatsoever. 
Oh, just, I don't, you guys saw it. I, <laughs> I don't know why I just skipped through it so quickly. I traded a first and a second this year for a first and two seconds next year from the Browns. So it was good value. I mean, the guys that I wanted all got drafted ahead of me, and there's nothing I could really do. I got one player that I wanted, and, like, there's no one on my board here that I want at all. So I'm going to trade this pick down for a first runner next year as well. So Saints without Drew Brees? Yes, please. I'm a rapper, clearly. Uh, see you for season three? Yeah, see you, for, see you for season three. So Antoine Ellison is an 81 overall. With quick development, uh, he just looks so good. 94 speed, 81 man, 80 zone. Wasn't as good as I thought he was going to be. I thought he'd be closer, like an 82, 83, even though 81 is like right there. I thought he'd be an 82 or an 83. So I'm like, I really can't miss out on this player. So that's not so bad. And, um, all right, I see the Dolphins drafted who I wanted last year. The Texans drafted the tackle that I wanted, who looked just incredible. He's an 80 overall, and he has superstar development. Of course he does. 85 run block, 82 pass block, 89 impact blocking. That was almost my new starting right tackle. I might still be able to trade for him, though. I guess there's potential for that. With this trade, I'm trading a first-round pick and a fifth-round pick for Joel Batonio and Kevin Zeitler from the Cleveland Browns with actually hopes of trading them. <laughs> All that was is trade bait. I've made some mistakes in this rebuild overall, which is uncharacteristic of me usually in these. Um, but I think, I think I can trade some of these players and really get this team right back on the right track. I mean, we're not far off, just slight adjustments. Like making... Come on, I hate when it does that. Kevin Zeitler is going to play right tackle. Interesting trade here. Max Sullivan is off the team. So is Cody Whitehair, obviously. But a fourth round pick for Jamal Adams, which kind of makes um, Byron Jones useless for my team. So Jamal Adams and Landon Collins are such a duo of safeties, you know, both from New York teams, obviously. Uh, one from the Jets, one from the Giants. Kind of cool that we have that work in our secondary now. So I think I can trade Byron Jones hopefully for a corner or wide receiver. We're just so close. I need another middle linebacker as well. Um, we're so close, just not quite there yet. With this trade, it's a massive trade. Byron Jones, uh, two third round picks, one this year, one next year for Luke Keekley, I think. Um, there's a slight doubt there. You could make arguments for other guys like Bobby Wagner, but I think Luke Keekley is the best middle linebacker in uh, pro football. So he is the newest member of the Chicago Bears. And, I mean, I feel like the team's coming together quite a lot. I still need to address cornerback. We haven't added anyone new. We need a better cornerback, preferably someone in the mid-80s, you know, or even higher, to, uh, to be the number two cornerback and play, uh, play Bryce Callahan in that slot role. With this trade, I'm trading two second-round picks, one this year, one next year for Joe Tooney. And he's an 89 overall left guard. I can play him at a number of different positions on the offensive line, wherever I see fit. And then we can trade... You know, maybe a guy like Kevin Zeitler who I moved to right tackle um, to a team in need of a right tackle for a really, really talented player. You look at a guy like potentially Dante Hightower, even though I don't really need him as much anymore. But we're probably going to go to a cornerback team, <laughs> cornerback team, to a team with a really good cornerback and uh, try to scoop, try to scoop them for our team, obviously. Massive, massive trade. Kevin Zeitler, a first round pick and a second round pick for Pat Pete, Patrick Peterson from the Arizona Cardinals. Debatably a top three cornerback in football. You could make an argument for the first um, cornerback. You know, I think personally he isn't the best. I would take uh, a few cornerbacks over him, but he's right up there. He is now the, uh, I believe the second highest overall on our entire team, which is pretty unbelievable. And now I think all that's left is get a different wide receiver in the mix and we should be good for season number three and I think a really really good season in store I am super excited things should go really well with this trade I'm trading a first and a second for Mike Williams from the Los Angeles Chargers and I think we are finally ready for season number three team is looking really really good I'm excited I expect big things I'm gonna use some of this XP upgrade the team and then I will show you guys where we are and then we're gonna simulate to the midseason mark, I expect really, really big things. We have a ton of talent. If we don't do well, I'm going to be very disappointed. All right, so this is the upgraded team. Looks pretty good overall. I mean, I, I haven't upgraded everyone, I guess. Pat O'Donnell's out there with 15 KXP nearly. 
But I think it's a pretty good team. Significant upgrades, I would say, somewhat across the board. Uh, really like where we are, and I think Season 3 should be very, very successful. So let's go ahead and simulate to the midseason mark. All right, so we are 8-0. and oh. Okay, that's, that's ridiculous. People are going to say whatever. Uh, I cheated, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Clearly, you can see Forrest wins. Didn't force any of them. We won a bunch of tight games at the 49ers, or should be versus the 49ers, at the Chiefs, at the Packers. 8-0, um, and oh, though. That's very, very unexpected. I would probably have put this team around four or five wins at this point, but 8-0 and oh is phenomenal. We have some XP to use. I'm going to use this XP at this point in hopes of going undefeated and maybe win the Super Bowl and call it uh, a rebuild here at year number three. Jordan Howard is a free agent, as well, impending free agent, as is Joe Tooney, Leonard Floyd, Nick Watkowski. I'm going to try to bring back some of these players, even Jonathan Bullard. We're going to try and bring back because he's played very well. So I'll keep you guys posted, update in a minute. So we signed everybody, Jonathan Bullard, Nick Watkowski, Leonard Floyd, Joe Tooney, and Jordan Howard all back on the team. We have a ton of XP to spend. Uh, I'm going to use, or sure, coach XP, I should say. So I'm going to put that all into QB training boost, and we still have some left over. So I guess I'll go ahead and do um, probably, I'm between defensive linemen and linebackers. I'm going to do defensive line because I know we have a really young left end, and Jonathan Bullard is young as well. So if those guys can get upgraded as quickly as possible, I think that's going to be the best for all parties involved. And I guess it's just me and all of you guys. There are probably a couple hundred people watching this at least. So I'm going to use some of this XP, upgrade this team, and see you guys in a minute. I also re-signed uh, Kevin White at a free agency, by the way, if you're wondering how he was back on the team. So, yeah. By the way, um, Mitch Trubisky won Offensive Player of the Week, which granted him quick development somehow. So he has that now, which is pretty cool. All right, here is the upgraded team. Things are looking really, really good. I think Mike Williams is like an 85, but it's showing as an 84 for some reason. And he has superstar development. I don't remember him having having this, but I guess I traded for him. And maybe he had it already. I'm not sure, but he has it. Obviously, I would not uh, change that in any way. There's no reason to. Well, I mean, other than it would be very beneficial. I just I wouldn't care. Team's looking pretty good. I don't think this is a good enough team to go undefeated. I don't know how we're 8-0. But uh, nevertheless, I'm not complaining. So I guess we'll just go ahead and simulate the playoffs. I don't see any chance that we don't make the playoffs, but it's Madden Sim. It's so random. Uh, I wouldn't put it past EA to bend me over. And All right, here we go. We clearly have a first round bye. This we don't have a wild card. We don't have anything else here. I'm going to predict 14-2. and two. And we are 13-3, and three, not bad. But, you know, wanted to go undefeated, obviously. Mitch Trubisky... Trubisky didn't even play amazingly, you know, 4,500 yards, 31 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. Could be better, but Jordan Howard played pretty well, 1,200 yards, 16 touchdowns, receiving two receivers over 1,000 yards, and Cam Meredith and Stefan Diggs. Stefan with 200 yards on top of that 1,000, seven touchdowns for him, seven touchdowns for Shaheen, uh, five for Williams, six for Cam Meredith. Blocking, you're not great. I mean, the blocking screwed up. I hate that. And that always happens. Uh, tackles Luke Keekley at 121. That's the fuck. That's not. Tackles for loss um, would be 11 for Michael Pierce of the team, 8 for Jonathan Bullard. Quarterback sacks 14 and a half for Leonard Floyd, 14 for Jonathan Bullard, who continues to play really, really well. 8 for Marcus Golden. Interceptions. We have 8 from Luke Keekley, 4 from Lennon Collins, 2 from Big Play Slay, who only made one big play. And Josh Lambeau's my kicker. I didn't even know that. Um, any force fumbles, I imagine, at least a few. Um, you know, a handful, about five there, I think that's, that was. Any defensive touchdowns? No. How are we doing in terms of awards? Le'Veon Bell wins MVP. It's cool to see a non-quarterback win it. Um, NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Dak Prescott. Any Bears? Mitch at number eight. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Luke Keekley. I will take that. Leonard Floyd at number seven. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Daniel Barrett. No Bears. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Sean Steven. No, oh, nope. Hale Redman at number seven or eight. I didn't really see. I think it was eight. But um, first round by, we got a shot in the divisional against the Minnesota Vikings division rival. This is exciting. I'm going to spend some of this XP, though, and uh, I'll show you guys a team right after we do so. Anyone... 
Mm, no real outliers in terms of a lot of XP. But, uh, decent bit here and there. This is the team. It actually looks pretty good. Um, obviously a lot better than where we were at the, even the mid-season mark. Just you can tell by the overalls in terms of the team. I think it's very talented. The defensive line is the weakest part of the entire team if I had to choose one aspect. I think the offensive line has come along quite well. Same thing with the receiving core. But here we go against the Vikings at home at Soldier Field. Here we go. We're 92 overall opposed to the Vikings 89 overall. Can we get the win? All right, really exciting game so far. 12 to 7, now 13 12. 18 to 13, 19 18, 21 to 19, 22 to 21. Down by five. Please, can we get the ball in the end zone? We can't, we lose. Okay. Out in the divisional. Love to see it. How does that happen? Unreal. I guess uh, season four, the final season, we should be dominant, but. Jeez, how did that happen? I have no idea. I don't know how we lost that game. <laughs> All I did was sign a fullback. He's a 90 overall, though, which um, subsequently won't help my team at all. I'm going to simulate to the draft. I don't even think I have a pick. I might. I haven't scouted at all. Probably just end up trading it for nothing. I have a seventh round pick. Yeah, we'll take it. Why not? Did I do end a draft? I thought I did next pick. We got George Drake. Can't tell which one of those is more of a first name. Tough, tough life I live. All right, here's the team. Nothing to really upgrade, so we're just going to jump right into it. Simulate to the midseason mark. We got a squad here. They got to come. They got to perform, though. See you guys at the midseason mark. Hopefully undefeated, <laughs> but I seriously doubt it. What a fall from grace. Three and four. Currently tied for the bottom of the division. Not ideal. Not ideal. Gonna use some of my coach XP, upgrade these players. We still are not out of it. We have a chance to make the playoffs. We just gotta actually, you know, win games. All right, this is the upgraded team. I mean, Stefan Diggs is closing in on a 99 overall. Fucking Kevin White left the team again. I don't know where he is. Maybe that's my issue. No Kevin White. We were 8-0 with Kevin White. Where's Kevin White, man? We need him back. He's not here. We're going to sign Miles Bennett. The third Bennett brother. Why not? Why not have that be a storyline? All right, here we go, though. Upgraded team. I think it's pretty good across the board. You know, we are not even above 500 in terms of a win-loss, but that doesn't mean we can't finish above 500 and finish in the playoffs in the final season. We can do this. Here goes nothing. Week 17, the moment of truth. If I see practice, fuck, dude. Ugh. Eight and eight. What a disappointing finish. So disappointing. How does that happen? I really don't know. I don't even think I checked out the stats last season, but, you know, they they existed. Mitch Shabrisky, Shabrisky shit the bed. Um... Jordan Howard played really, really well, though, this season. Stefan Diggs, of course, did as well. So did Cam Meredith, locking probably somebody 40 sacks. Close enough. Luke Keekley played well. We had a lot of sacks. Tackles for loss, 15 for Michael Pierce. But quarterback sacks, 15 and a half from Jonathan Bullard. 13 from Leonard Floyd. Interceptions, we have five from Keekley, four from Darius Slay, three from Pat Pete and Bryce Callahan. Hair near my eye. Uh, no one forced more than one fumble, and no one... Nope. Morgan Westvich out of Oklahoma with the one defensive touchdown. If you care about the awards, here it is. You know, here they are. Matt Stafford did some stuff. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Matt Stafford as well. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Bobby Wagner. Luke Heakley at number three. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Morgan James. We didn't have anybody in here. Surprise, surprise. But thank you guys for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed. You know, Madden Sim really screwed me. I think this was a pretty good team. I think this was a really good team, actually where we performed up to snuff, maybe even a bit better than we should have last season, and then completely, completely did not play well in this fourth season. But again, thank you guys for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.